Yo, welcome back. Uh, it's a very cold and windy Friday, and today I'm going to be doing a video on our AG200. AG, to those of you that don't know, is Alien Green, um, and that's a Clio 200 Reynolds Sport range. The reason I've decided to go on and do another one of these videos, the FN2 buyer's guide that we did, um, it was about a month ago now, actually went really, really well. We got a lot of uh, questions back from it. Um, we got a lot of feedback, so it seems that the buyer's guides online do really, really well. So we thought we'd do another one on a car that we we're really familiar with, and just kind of just kind of train you and, and let you know what you should be looking for when you're going to buy one of these Reynolds Sport Clios. These these are an awesome car. I absolutely love them. I've owned a hell of a lot of them, but they do have the little pitfalls. Not that they're a major problem, but obviously these are getting quite old now. I mean these. The Alien Green behind us is a, is a 59 plate car, so we're getting on for 11 years old now, so they're not by any means a new car. Over time they do develop faults, but that's not the end of the world, these faults can be fixed. But I'm just going to run you through what you should be looking for when you're buying a 200 or a 197. So you, you don't overspend it, you can try and get the car at the right money if you like. If the car looks expensive, but the body works nice, but mechanically it's not really what it should be. You know, you want a little bit of wiggle room and you want to get that car right, so this should, should aid you to do that. So I'll give you a quick look around the 200 first that we've got because it's a beautiful car. Um, I'll describe you and I'll tell you about it and then we'll go into the pitfalls and I'll show you what you should be looking for and the issues that these cars obviously do have nowadays as well. So, point number one. Numero uno with these cars. They're a hot hatch. They get driven hard. They're a B-road car. They're a preferred track car. A lot of people use these cars on track. Sorry, I didn't think that was recording there. So, some of them have, have, have had a hard time, right? It's standard. When you buy a rental sport, you've got to expect this. It's not an issue. What I find is modified cars and track cars, people who own them are, are enthusiasts. They do get very well maintained. So, don't let a track car put you off as long as the car looks right and drives right. So, the box itself. These have big problems with sync rows. So... If, for example, you've been driving hard, you've been lazy with a clutch, you've missed a shift, this can cause issues with the box. So you'll get like a little notch in the gear. Don't let the sync roll problem put you off. There are people available to fix these gearboxes and it's not the end of the world, right? So the gearboxes themselves, uh, if you're in the trade, you can get a gearbox fixed from around £700. If you're private, you're probably looking anywhere from 900 quid to 1100 quid to have these gearbox refurbed and get it right as long as the car's demanding the right price tag with the box incorporated having an issue then that's not a problem get your box fixed because it is worth it once the gearboxes are right the gearboxes in these the ratios are great nice short shifts and um, they rev out quite well so yeah don't let it put you off but it is it is a problem with these as well um point number two belts the time of belts on these it isn't an easy job most of the time it's a specialist job, so always beware that your time and belt obviously should be changed at a specialist or somebody who knows what they're doing. I know lots of people who've tried these Reynolds Sport time and belts, confess to be mechanics, and they've gotten them wrong. It has happened, I've seen it happen many a time as well. People I know have tried it and failed, so I'm not saying it's the hardest thing in the world, but you need the proper tools, and obviously I would, I would personally take mine to a specialist, because if you're selling the car, even if you're keeping the car, it's nice to see a specialist stamp in the service history and know it's had the right work, at the right places um belts on these if you're doing a belt um to phase if you want to change the water pump fair enough uh in the trade again five fifty five fifty ish five hundred quid to get the job done maybe six anywhere up to seven eight hundred quid depending on where you're going and who's doing the job that's what you should be paying basically if you can get the trade rates like we do then obviously great you you, you will save a few quid um point number three flexies Exhaust flexes on these are an absolute pain in the ass. So the reason these go, not a, not a lot of people, some people will and some people won't know this. So the engine, obviously the manifolds bolt the engine, obviously the flex is a little bit further down the exhaust. Now what happens is when you're going hard in the car, when you're normally driving the car, the engine will naturally create a little bit of movement. Now the flexi on these are that weak when the engine obviously moves, the exhaust manifolds move and the exhaust, the exhaust moves and the flexi takes a little bit of a battering. So what you can get is you can get a power flex engine mount, it's the right hand side engine mount insert, pop one of them in, that'll reduce engine movement. So your flexi won't take as much hammer. That actually prevent, not prevents the flexi from splitting but it will make it last a lot longer. What I would say is if your flexi's broke on this, don't even bother putting a new flexi in. 
There's a company called Toyo Sport. It's a budget manifold, but it works quite well. Toyo Sport manifolds are about £200. Just go and get a Toyo Sport manifold, fit the manifold, and get rid of the flexi altogether, and then your issue, it, it won't come back. I guarantee if you fix a flexi or weld another flexi, independent how long you're going to keep the car, you may have these issues yet again. Um, so that's, to me, is the main three points. Uh, but that's not it. So there is more. Number four. Uh, just literally, it's the ball joints and swivel hubs. If you hear these cars, it, it happens. Honestly, I get loads of these in with, with knocky ball joints, swivel hubs. You know, these things aren't right. And you can tell straight away the steering will feel a little bit vague. There'll be a little bit play before the steering rack picks up. Um, the ball joints, you'll get like a little knockover adverse camera, little bumps. Always feel for those because, again, on these cars... They aren't the easiest cars to work on, I'll not lie. So ball joints and swivel hubs can be a pain in the arse. So again, nine times out of ten, I mean, most garages can do the work, but a Reynolds Sport for me, I always like them taken care of by the specialist. I always go to the guy who knows what he's doing. It's less hassle and it's peace of mind. So again, the ball joints and swivel hubs, it would be a specialist job for me. I would always want it done properly. So make sure that you check those. Um on from that, those are the, the, the main points. Those are the main things that you should be checking. So just to, just to obviously go back over that. So you've got gearbox synchro issues. Check for the gearbox synchro. Um, the second one was belt and defaser. Make sure it's had a belt and defaser done. If not, obviously you'll need to budget that in. Uh, number three was the manifold flexi. Uh, check that. Toyo Sport do an upgrade. And number four was obviously the ball joints. So what I'll do is now I'll take you in the interior of our 200. And I'll show you bits of interior bits to look out for, bits of wear. Again, this is me being fussy with stuff, but it's things that, you, as a buyer, you're probably just going to look at yourself. You'll probably be able to identify these things, but this, this might help you. It's little things to look out for. So, so this is the trim of our AG200. Uh, again, you'll notice straight away, this has the, the lovely yellow Dr. Caro seats in. Those are awaiting the steam clean, by the way. But uh, yeah, it does have the yellow Dr. Caro's in. Absolutely amazing seat. Hold you very, very well. If you're buying a 200, if you can get these in, these seats are, are, are just cracking. If you can get one with Recaro's, always try and buy one because it makes a nice difference. So, obviously, as you can see, the sides of the seats are very, very high. And you kind of have you put your leg up and over to get in the seats. Um, if you're a, a lad like myself, the larger variety, I'm a 36-inch waist. I always catch this when you get in the car. You just cannot help it. Um, so, this obviously wears. Obviously this is metal. It pushes up against the metal, and eventually it wears the fabric through. Now, don't worry about this too much, because there is repairs available. I can get these seat repairs normally around 150 to 200 pounds to fix that issue. Um, but it is very, very common. Um, only the real thing with the interior is steering wheel peel. Again, it's not a big thing, but, you know, look at that steering wheel there. You can see this one's actually quite good in comparison to what you normally get. Um, but the steering wheel there, they do peel a little bit, so just look out for those things. In interior-wise, that's about it, to be fair. This be quite a bonny car inside these 200s. This one here is a cup-packed car, which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, and it also has a cruise control and air con. Right, so I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. This is an important bit of information which a lot of people tend to get wrong and get confused about. So, the cup packs, okay? Very important. If you're going to buy a 200 for me, it would have to be a cup because the cup suspension is a hell of a lot better, the cars handle nicer on them, and they come with the nice red Brembo calipers from the factory. Now, this is the bit that you need to take note of. If this car here, the 200, was a factory cup, it comes with black door strips if it's a factory cup and the dash is slightly differently textured that's a factory cup okay if it's a non-factory cup but the car is cup packed what i mean by cup packed is if the gentleman or woman who's purchased the car from you from the reynolds factory or dealership as it were whichever you prefer they can request to have a cup pack fitted so that would be a non-factory cup, but it would be cup packed. Now, the way to tell that is red Brembo's. So if the Brembo calipers are red on the cars, it will be cup packed. And keep your eye out for a little sticker on the shockers as well, which will indicate that the suspension is cup suspension. The cup setup is what you want. So just to reiterate, dead quickly, factory cup, black side strips, different textured dash, red Brembo's. 
non-factory cup, cup packed. Colour-coded door strips, so they'll be the same colour as the car. Red Brembo's suspension upgrade. So keep your eyes peeled for the yellow sticker on the shutters, which should indicate the car is cup packed and the red Brembo's. This one is actually uh, made to look like a factory cup with the black door strips, but this one isn't a factory cup. This one here is a cup packed car. So this one here has the red Brembo's. I had the red Brembo's before they were colour coded and also has the cup suspension as well. So uh, if you can get a factory cup, they are a little bit rarer. Um, but as long as you get the cup pack, you know, you, you can't go far wrong. The cup pack is what you want in these cars. So always look to buy one at the right money if it's cup packed. Right, so moving on, we try and offer you a, a full kind of buyer's guide. With that, I would always look at um, possible places to repair, people to tune the car. So I'm going to give you some examples of specialists. Again, just use Facebook, guys. It's as good as ending. These all have owner's pages. So there you go. This is Rensport. I'm using Rensport as an example because a gentleman called Chris Dark runs this business. He's local to us. Chris has done a lot of our prep work. Been very happy with his work and his time skills, so he's a guy to consider. He's based at Middlesbrough Northeast. You've also got T Burn. T Burn are obviously a Reynolds specialist as well. They are based in Sunderland. You've also got Beanie Sport, who are very good for conversions. You've got Diamond Motors. You've got Engine Dynamics. Those are just some of the Reynolds specialists. So again, you can find all these on Facebook. Don't be afraid to use it. Go and check the pages out. Check the guy's work, and obviously you can get some prices. Tuning, very important part. These ca cars are NA. It's hard to pull power out of NA cars. Everybody knows that. But it's not to say it's not worth tuning. So uh, AFI Parts are a renowned tuner. They're not just a specialist in one particular car. They do a whole range of cars. They can tune anything. It's all live tuned on a dyno, which is what you prefer. You don't want any of these flash maps off the shelf. You want to go to a proper guy who knows what he's doing with the Roland Road. Uh, my recommendation for this is AFI Parts. They think he's a run con Cheshire. Uh, also, another tuner which is worth mentioning, you've got um, RS Tuning. RS Tuning are at Leeds. Uh, they predominantly do a lot more Reynolds, but I've found generally AFI parts suit what I need, and these guys have always brought good results for the cars that we've had in. They haven't necessarily been tuned by us, but they have been to AFI, and AFI uh, do a very good job. So, again, just AFI parts, Facebook. Facebook is as good as anything. It's as good as Google at the moment for tuners. It's a bit more interactive, and you can have a look. So, yeah, AFI parts down at Cheshire. Uh, give these guys a call with regards to tuning your Reynolds Sport. Part suppliers. Again, just using examples of the guys that I use. Um, part suppliers are available up and down the country. This here is our go-to guy. Again, he is a local guy. We like to keep our business local, you know. These are just enthusiasts. This guy does track days with us. I've known him a long time. Uh, and he always beats prices online, the likes of eBay. I mean, eBay is normally the cheapest for everything. But this guy does a really good job and gets the stuff cheap. So this guy is CP, a gentleman called Chris Pickering, who owns CP Performance. So CP, what he is, is he is a middleman, if you like. So... He has good connects with all of the dealers. So, um, Brembo, PBS, um, RPD, which is Reynolds Parts Direct, Scorpion, um, Yellow Speed, IBAC. It, this guy has dealings with everybody. Miltech, Cobra, it, you know, this guy has basically everything under one roof. So, if you need any, any parts, again, or just use Facebook. It's very simple and straightforward. Um, contact Christian if you want any bits. I'm sure this guy will, will help you. Um, he's always available on the phone or you can get him through his Facebook page. So any modifications that you might want to look at, use Chris at CP Performance. I'll just keep this brief. As I mentioned earlier on, um, it's nice to be able to show you what I was referring to. So as I mentioned with the flexis having a problem, putting these engine mounts in basically minimises the engine movement, which stops the stress in the flexi and basically prevents the flexi from cracking or smashing as it were. It may still wear over time, but this will prevent it to slow the process down. Um, as you'll see, obviously the yellow speed coilovers there, they are they're pretty much brand new. And I'll show you the side, obviously we've got the top off so you can get a closer look. So as you can see, fully adjustable top mount. So obviously at the end of the day, these, the party piece of these cars, obviously as anybody knows, is handling. Um, the geometry side of it is very, very important to get the car to corner at speed. So with regards to the camber adjustment there, this car will turn in quicker with these yellow speed coilovers. Again, 
as mentioned before these are readily available now and on the market and uh, the preferred part supplier CP performance can get you a price on these if you would like um, and a little care tech induction kit in there as well again just a little add-on so yeah you can make these cars a hell of a lot better with with minimal changes if you like this setup here um, the coil overs the induction kit a few little bits you know you'd probably see change of a thousand pound once you get sorted fitted and geometry set up so well worth the money just thought i would wrap the video up with two cleos side by side uh, both quite rare colors in these cars uh, this one here is a modified racing blue the reason i've decided to put one in is because this is what you can be looking at if you want to spend a few pound and change the looks of the car just slightly mind you it's not over the top so you can see obviously both cars do look very very well together two very good strong colors for the for the Reynolds sport range this one here is the Reynolds f1 team this one here is a limited edition car to celebrate the f1 success in 2005 2006 these were a limited run of cars i believe there was 500 of these made this is one of the five i want to just show you the f1 team graphics it's quite a bonny car this quite well kept the reason i brought this one is as well um i showed a friend bring this one down as i touched on earlier um christian from seat me performance i actually sold him this car and then he's kind of using this as a bit of a, a demo car for his Renault range and he started adding a few parts so he's added the Speedline wheels those are cup racers and those are 8J so um, the, the proper cup racer offset as well very very nice wheel obviously these are standard cup packed as you can see the red Brembo's I touched on before with the, the Alien Green 200 obviously his F1 team graphics if you're looking for an F1 I think in years to come these will be sought after again come standard with the recaros as well he has changed it up a little bit so as you can see the stance i'll compare the two if you look at the arch gap there in comparison to 200 this one here uh, sits on christian's yellow speed coilovers from cp performance these have not long been released yellow speed are normally renowned for the honda range they're now moving across into reynolds and these suspension setups are available for these little cleos and i've been in this car the setup's night and day very very good set of suspension you can see the roof graphics as well just gives you an idea of the different cars throughout the range which are available as you'll notice the back end looks different he has put a 200 diffuser on the back of there as well but those speed lines sit well obviously with the arch gap too so this is just like a, a modified example basically these like a, a few add-ons which you can add for the Clio's I just wanted to compare the two between the standard one and the, the modified one so yes two very very good cars I'll conclude the video there for now uh, hopefully it's been quite useful to people who are looking to buy one of these Clio's and it will give you a bit more insight into what to look for, the problems, and the kind of pitfalls with the car. Uh, my advice is, if you're looking for a Clio, stick with it. You will enjoy the car. Um, if there's any comments, anything you want to know, just feel free to put in the comment section on the video. And again, just make sure you subscribe and hit the bell in the top right-hand corner of the screen to subscribe. Thanks for watching.